In this third part of the inverse yield curve review, I took into account the low points of the S&P 500 in the last two recessions. So I basically got the, um, the month in the year where the stock market hit the lowest from the recession. And I did that for both of them. And uh, applied it to the month and year of the yield curve shown. And basically I found out that the percent in the 10-year treasury constant maturity minus the three-month treasury constant maturity chart, uh, that it was about the same point on the chart in both recessions. In uh, the dot-com bubble, it was 2.43. And you can see that with the, um, the yellow line there. And with the green line, it was 2.76. We're currently at 1.5, and those two indicators were the bottom of the market for each recession. So, uh, the best to my knowledge, if we're if this recession behaves like the two previous, we'll be in the range of 2.43 to 2.76 when the bottom of the market is reached. And another thing to take into account in the um, the housing crisis it took three years for between the uh when the yield curve inverse and when the bottom of the market reached so with that being taken into account uh when we if you add three years to when we uh the yield curve inverse in 2019 that is that would be april 2022 which we haven't reached uh, being the bottom of the market. Now, it's just a prediction, but if we reach April 2022 and reach 2.76, uh, during a market crash, that would be a great indicator that we could be at the bottom uh, based off of previous history. So I just wanted to go over that. Um, if you learned something and if you think this is worth uh s sharing with other people a thumbs up would be very helpful f to help other people see this content uh, i th i think it's pretty valuable and it can kind of give us a better idea how we can time the market most people say you can't do it but i'm willing to uh take that challenge and see if it's possible all right thanks for uh tuning in